RPG Escape 2020 continues. We're here with Henry Lopez, founder, creative lead at Paradigm Concepts, uh, the designer of the 2012 award-winning Origins role-playing game of the year, Arcanus. And am I saying that right? Right? Arcanus. Yeah, Arcanus. Arcanus. Yeah. All said differently in, in certain parts of the yeah, US, of but, but as long as you're having fun with exactly. it, that's all that matters. Southern part of the empire is different. <laughs> Your first, your first game came out, uh, and, and by the way, I, I, let's well, let's talk a little bit some more. What's your, sure. your your zombie superhero game called Rotting Rotted Capes? Rotted Capes. Right. We're going to talk more about okay. that also, right. and uh, you're also uh, working on converting uh, Arcanist to some other systems, also including D and D fifth, or is that done? That's already done. It's done. That's, that's done. We okay. have the uh, that came out in I want to say two and a half, almost three years ago. We came out. Well, actually, it's funny. The very first, very very first. Fifth edition product that we came out with was a, a book called uh, Forged and Magic Reforged, which was uh, over 400 brand new magic items. But it wasn't just magic item stats, every single magic item, including the potions, which we have no idea how hard it was to do, has a story to it. So even the potions have a little history, have a little story, so that, and, and obviously they're based on the world setting of our case, so that if you are running Forgotten Realms or you're running Dark Sun or, or your homebrew or whatever, all you really have to do is just change the pronouns, you know, to protect the innocent, and you can use 400 brand new magic items. And they, they range everything from potion and alchemical items, artifacts, weapons, and obviously wondrous items. So, and then, obviously that did very, very well for us. People Was anybody it. doing that before? There, at that point, there have been absolutely no magic item books. Uh, with, the it's it's with the exception of, obviously, the Dungeon Master's Guide from 5th uh, edition. Right, but... Uh, but yeah, but you were providing a level of detail mm -hmm. and and also a level of volume. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's, it's mm -hmm. not just uh, it's not just a, a right. dagger, but it's also mm -hmm. lotions, potions. You know, right. and, and that and nope. and that hadn't been done before. Well, I don't at, at least on that level. That I'm level, sure, right. and for third edition or, or right. previous editions that have, but for fifth edition at that moment, no. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we do is we never have a plus one dagger or a plus two sword or whatever. All our weapons are named. Oh, actually, all the items are named. Because Excalibur was not a plus five Holy Avenger. Right. It was Excalibur. That's right. right. And that's what we did. So everything has a name. Everything is, is uh, has a history. Because if not, you know, it's, it's much cooler to say, I am the, the wielder. Right, it cheapens the existence of the magic item if exactly. it's just somebody's just turning a factory turning out plus two exactly. rings of, of protection. Exactly. Or the like, exactly. Right? It should have a story. It's more interesting Absolutely. that way. You think that's part of the reason that the... Uh, Part of the secret of the popularity? Well, whatever popularity we have, I think is, is first of all, thanks to the amazing fan base that we have. Uh, those guys are, are amazing. The, the, the guys and gals who, who go out there and they run and they put so much into their characters that uh, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's gratifying to, to hear that. One of the things that we do that I think is a little different, and it's funny because originally, let me, let me backtrack. D&D, what's the crux of D&D? You go into these dungeons. Right, and you you know knock down the door, kill the monster, grab the treasure. Right, hold on. dungeons. Of first right. Exactly. Right. So when I was first creating Arcanus, I I like things to make sense to me. So I said, where are these dungeons coming from? Why are there dungeons? You know. So I created a in very 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 broad strokes a sixty thousand year history of five empires that rose and fell and, and all these little empires in between to give <clears throat> a, a rationale. Yes. Of why these crypts? Why is this here? Why is that there? You know, the the Black Tower of Getulus. You know, what is that? You know, right. so they all have a history. Funny thing is, we uh, were we were and we still are a very very small company. We didn't have the the advertising budget to you know to go you know, wide with uh, telling people who we were. So we decided, hey, why don't we do a grassroots uh, advertising and do uh, adventures through the RPG like a living campaign? Well, living campaign is is structured in such a way that it's a four hour slot. It's a very, very, very difficult to run a dungeon in a four hour slot. So, and if you do, it's only you know, three rooms or, or what, it's not much of a dungeon. So, instead, our stories are not dungeon driven, you know, dungeon delving per se, although you know, we have one, one uh, the occasional one. They're more epic storylines. They are, um, you know, uh, Mini campaigns within Mini, a campaign. Right, they're, they're story arc. It's they're an right, arc. They're story, they're story, but the story is not just the evolution of the character and his wealth and power. It's actually how they can sh uh, shape the world. So, in fact, in the living campaign, we had a slogan, which was, leave your mark upon the shattered empires. 
Because one of the things that we do is we make sure that after each pivotal adventure, there's a questionnaire. Did the, your group do this, that, and the other thing? You know, pop, 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 pop. And then majority the checklist. The checklist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we let people either email it in or snail mail or whatnot. And uh, at the end of three months after the adventure premieres, we collate all the information, we tally up the scores, and whatever the majority ruled, that becomes canon. So we allow the players to shape the world because I think that's important. Uh, so part of the popularity. So your happens. results will may have uh, consequences for the absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. One of the, one of the things that I think uh, made it popular was the fact that we run it. It's a worldwide campaign because we have players and we have a huge, uh, very fervent group in Australia and you're one of, but we run it like a home game. You know, so it's a big thing and with a small small feel to it. You know, a very intimate feel to it, and I think that's part of the popularity. Uh, I like to think that the stories are are interesting. The stories give you a, we're known for our moral quandaries. Uh, we, we give people not the lesser of two evils, but either you know the lesser of two goods sometimes, or the better of two goods sometimes, right. or whatnot. Or we pit them against adversaries that they normally will not be pitted against, like uh, you know a group, a holy order of, cha- of, uh, of paladins. Well, these guys are, are the good guys. Why are we fighting them? Because evil is not dependent upon, or your opponent is not dependent upon evil or good. Right. No, no, no. You may both want the same land, you know. Agendas. Or, right, it's an agenda, right. Objectives. Right. And that's what spurs it on. Well, that's, all, you know, th- this is a level uh, and depth of uh, of storytelling that we didn't have when we were kids, for instance. You know, uh, even, you know, the, the, the best we could hope for was Judge's Guild having four members of the same family having the same alignment. Right. Much less the father's chaotic evil, the mother's lawful good, <laughs> and then, exactly. you know, whatever. So, so it's, but but we, I, I know as a kid, I felt cheated mm-hmm. because of whatever the random generator right. that they were using. That, right. You know, so, so it's important, and I think that um, people are expecting this now. I, I, perhaps not to the level and depth... Uh, and there's a certain degree of, of love and tender love and mm-hmm. care. It's why, it's why this, the stuff that you eat from grandma's versus right. stuff you, is, is different. But I think that um, ultimately the consumer of, of gaming products is going to, if, if they're looking for something, they're going to find mm-hmm. a product that matches the quality that, that they demand. Exactly. Would you say um, that somebody who's getting into uh, game design, uh, the idea of a living campaign is, is worth... Uh, uh, exploring it to, or, or something with mm-hmm. long story arcs that that give uh, subscribers, if you will, a reason to mm-hmm. keep tuning back in. Well, it depends, and I hate to give you that that, that answer. Yeah, but that's it really, there's no but, answer. But it really does depend because I'll tell you this: a living campaign is has an enormous drain of resources. You have to feed the beast, as I say. You've got to come out with not just one adventure a month. No, no, you've got to come out with at least two adventures a month because people start playing. And heaven help you if it's a long weekend where they're right. going to rip through seven adventures in one weekend and they're like, well, we have nothing else to play. And now you're going to wait a month and just give me one? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Now, during the D20 days, it was uh, we had an embarrassment of riches. People, after our first year, I wrote, uh, I think, 90% of all the adventures. And uh, then a couple other people jumped on, and then all of a sudden, after our second year, people said, "Hey, can I write for you?" I'm like, "Yes, please." You know, we had guidelines and whatnot, but people would write. And all of a sudden, we had an enormous amount of those soft points that, I, that we had spoken earlier about, um, where people were just throwing like one shots, and people loved it. And I think that grew the popul- you know, the population of the of the of the, of the, uh, the group. Now, if you have the time to do that, great. Most people don't. Right. The problem is that now I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound, so I have to continue <laughs> to, do, to do that. Right, and you become a, a slave to your right. uh, to, to, to your exactly. project. Exactly. You know? Yeah, a willing it, slave, it's, but yeah, it's it, right, but right. it starts ruling right. you. You know, your right. your, your your time. Now, as far as the campaign, whether they want a story arc or whatnot that you mentioned in your question, the problem is that there are certain people who do not do not like metaphors. They they avoid it like the plague, because they don't want to be plugged in. And I understand their point of view because, uh, quite frankly, uh, Dragonlance, which everybody loves and whatnot, has a meta plot, right? And uh, or Star Wars, uh, even better example. Everybody right. knows about Star Wars, right? Well, if you play in the Star Wars universe during this, the period of Star of, of the movies, well, you already know Luke Skywalker is going to do X, Y, and Z. So what are you going to do? So your your story is always peripheral, right? Right. Now, if you're okay with, another one, also. Right. Now, if you're okay with that, 
perfect. If everybody buys into that, right. that's great. But in my experience, most people want to have the spotlight on them. They want their characters to be the most exactly. important thing that's going exactly. on in the world. Right. So either in your Star Wars game, Luke Skywalker doesn't exist, and then they can fill in that block, you know, or you have to do something different. Right, set it right. in a different time frame. Exactly. Or so. Exactly. so these are the challenges that, that uh, these are the real sorts of questions that somebody has to, has to ask and have answered before they, so. before they pull the trigger. Henry Lopez, Paradigm Concepts, thanks so much. It's oh, been a pleasure. Looking forward you. to more in the breakout sessions. Hey, thank you very right? much. To be continued. Oh, and stay with us.